Hi comic fans! Today I'm going to show you how you could display your comics on your walls without damaging either your comics or the walls. And the best part is it's super easy to change your displays when you're ready for a new theme. Now I don't have room to display all my collection at once, so I rotate my displays every month. Or at least that's the goal. Just between you and me, I think my Taskmaster display was up for three months. This month's theme is Spider-Man 2099. The materials you'll need for this project, beside your comics, are comic top loaders that you can get from your local comic book store or Amazon.com. I will include the Amazon product link in the video description and in the comments. These things are pretty sturdy. This one has been on my wall for about half a year now, and it has small little indents from the binder clip at the top, but otherwise it's undamaged. These top loaders are like a big version of the sleeves I used to store my favorite Magic the Gathering cards in back in junior high. Ah, memories. Huh. Actually, most of junior high sucked. Let's move on. Binder clips. Don't go any smaller than a quarter inch capacity. Wall hooks. I'm using command clear hooks that hold half a pound or eight ounces. The weight requirement you will need depends on how big of binder clip you use. But I can tell you, the bag and boarded comic, clip, and top loader on my display is under 5 ounces in weight. The important part of picking out a wall hook is to make sure the handle of your binder clip will fit over the peg of your wall hook. Craft foam. I'm using super cheap foam from the dollar store. So if your foam is super thin like mine, you'll also need some glue to attach two foam strips together. Scissors, pencil, and a ruler. The first thing you want to do is measure your wall and attach the hooks by following the manufacturer's instructions. You may need to wait a day before adding any weight to the hooks. My hooks are spaced about 23 and a half centimeters apart from the center of one hook to the central point of the next. Then we need to measure and cut a strip of craft foam that is 18.1 centimeters long and somewhere around 1.3 centimeters wide for each comic you want to display. This foam is going to fit inside the very top of your top loader. The reason we are using foam is to give the binder clip a little bit more to grip and to help keep dust out of the top loader. My super cheap foam is only 2 centimeters thick, so I'm going to cut two strips per comic and glue the two strips together. Next, slide your bag and boarded comic inside the top loader. You want your comic to rest at the very bottom of the top loader to give you room for the foam and to keep the binder clip from clamping on your comic. Then, slide the foam inside the top loader. Depending on the size of your comic book's board, you may have to position the foam in front of the board. Attach the binder clip to the center of the top loader. You can use a ruler to find the central point. For my top loaders, the central point is at 9.5 centimeters, so I'm attaching the center of the clip at that point. The binder clip has two handles, one at the front and one at the back side of the top loader. Ignore the handle on the front and attach the back handle to the hook on your wall. It's super easy to change out your displays because you only have to remove the clip, slide out the foam, and then change your comic. You can also add posters to your display using a similar binder clip method and foam board. If there's enough interest, I can make a video on showing how you could display your posters this way. And that's it for today. I'm not sure what we're doing on the next Marvel Monday. Uh, maybe I'll have a Marvel Legends Black Panther by then to review? <laughs> probably not. Hmm, maybe we'll make something instead. So make sure you subscribe if you'd like to stay updated. And thanks for watching.